Welcome back, guys, to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm here with Stephanie Bellinger, Mindset and Transformation Coach. Many of you know her already as the Spiritual Boss Babe, and I'm excited to have her on the show. Welcome, Stephanie. Hey, Sarah. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, so I just love to bring other you know, spiritual entrepreneurs on the show that have really turned their passion and their purpose, monetize their gift online, really have been able to really share their message and their gift for the world, obviously, the, um, the calling and censored. So answering that call to be of service. And um, I would just like to dive into a little bit about whatever you're feeling called to talk about on your journey, what you really feel is like, let's just start with like, you know, maybe like, one of the biggest things that you're seeing right now with the women that you're working with as far as like obstacles or frustrations or something like that that you might be able to speak to. Yeah, I find that a lot of people struggle with like self-doubt and fear and letting those things get in the way and hold them back and slow them down from stepping into their purpose and really going big with their message and mission. That's actually like a big part of what, what I'm so passionate about helping people with, like when it comes to shifting limiting beliefs and really stepping into and embodying the highest version of yourself that's already doing it all and is already limitless. Um, it's something that I've struggled with a lot on my journey, like really just not feeling good enough or not feeling smart enough or second guessing or comparing myself to other people or always trying to quote unquote get there and reach for that destination that's all the way over there instead of like being really happy and excited and motivated in the now. And so I find that that's a huge struggle for people and something that is so important to overcome so that you can literally begin to build more and more and more momentum in the direction that you want and see results in your reality. Yeah, that's so, that's so everything you just said, I resonate with so much. So now you're on the other side. So you were growing your business, right? And you were probably looking to other influencers and things like that on how to do it right. And then mm -hmm. getting stuck in imposter syndrome and, you know, like second guessing yourself. And now you're on the other side of that. Many women look up to you as an influencer, right? So mm -hmm. how do you, so what is, talk to me a little bit about that, that now that you went through that journey and you went through that, what do you think like the number one or two things or like whatever comes to your mind that was like really the thing that really helped you make that transition? The thing is literally what I teach now. And, and that's like uh, the identity work, stepping into a totally new identity, stepping into the version of yourself that already is there. And like, I'm not perfect. I still have things come up for me. So I use myself as my own muse as well. And I've worked with people, everyone from people who are just starting out to people who are already like impacting tons of people, making six, seven figures, and they still deal with the same similar things that pop up here and there. So it's not necessarily a matter of like never feeling it again. Mm -hmm. It's more of like learning how to navigate the waters and learning how to ground into a new normal so that whenever you do feel the, that resistance come up or those fears or doubts or whatever, you're, you, you are able to like snap back or, and remember who the F you are like much faster and much easier. So that it doesn't knock you off track. It just teaches you a lesson. And I've learned how to look at the resistance or the fear or doubt, or whatever as lessons and like an opportunity to grow even more. And the more we uh, grow, the more we remember and are able to um, just continue to reach new levels in our life and our business, manifest things faster and easier, um, and just appreciate all of it, the beauty and the contrast. And mm -hmm. so like, yeah, I may be on the other side of, I mean, I'm a totally different person than I was like freaking last month, geez, <laughs> let alone like last year or last two years, completely different. And um, I still go back to the same practices, the same, you know, similar um, just lessons that I've learned and all of that stuff. And like, there are some core things in the stuff that I teach uh, one of those being is that action builds confidence and crushes fear. And so it's important to keep showing up. And the more you show up and the more you put yourself out there and the more you claim what you desire and the more you stay committed to doing the inner work and the outer aligned actions, 
the, the, your success is inevitable. Like there's no way you're going to fail. You're just going to keep growing and expanding. And so as you go on that journey, you begin to trust yourself more and more and more and more and more. And the more you trust yourself, the more you become in tune and in sync with the truth of who you are. And the more you become in sync with the truth of who you are, the more synchronicities you'll experience in your reality, the more in flow you'll feel um, and in alignment you'll feel and things will just seem to flow easier for you and won't be as forceful or like, how do I do this? And all of that because you'll be out of your head and in your heart and more aligned with the essence of you. I hope that makes sense. I just kind of flow oh my God. there. <laughs> that was a beautiful flow. It made perfect sense. At least I, I know so many of my listeners are going to resonate with this and you touched on so many beautiful things. Um, really loving the process, really the beauty of the process and really being in the moment of the process and knowing that there's going to, you know, that like when you can really appreciate the process that you're in versus thinking you got to be somewhere else. It's like sucks. It just brings you into the present moment where you get to experience the true essence of who you are. Mm -hmm. And so that was so, that was so key. What else did you say that, um, that, uh, oh, taking action, taking action builds the confidence. That is so, mm -hmm. that is such another important factor. You can be, just be paralyzed in this like analysis paralysis or like, you know, you know, stall, I call it sacred action, but like just stalling out all of your, you're not, you have to have courage at that point, right. To take the action, then confidence can come later. Mm -hmm. as you continue to take actions and show up for yourself. There was something else that you said I loved, but um, yeah, that was beautiful. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You talk a lot about manifesting and stepping into your future self now. Do you want to just share mm -hmm. on that a little bit? I, that's such a key point for the manifesting process. Yeah. Like I thought I had manifesting down pat like <laughs> a while ago and I kept hitting roadblocks and I kept like, having all of these fears and doubts come up, like I said, they come up, but I would get sucked into them. And I would have, I would just get so frustrated with myself. Like, why is this happening? Like, I know how to manifest things. Like if I know it, then why isn't it happening? And I would go into this cycle, this spiral. And I would be like, shit, maybe I don't really know how to freaking make shit happen. But I've, I've done it before. This is like a while ago when I was going through this mode of like, okay, how come it works sometimes and not all the time? What, did, what have I done in the times when it did work? And how can I apply it to different things that I want, like more money? Um, this is at the beginning of my um, business journey with Spiritual Boss Babe. And I started looking back to times in my life when I, because I have had a, some really amazing experiences like that were just just really cool. Like when I lived in New York city, when I had my personal training business, like I made shit happen. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily like manifesting millions of dollars, but like I experienced things that were kind of like really rare to experience, like with um, ex just opportunities that came to me and whatever. And I started thinking back to what did I do during those times? Like one of those times was when I went self-employed with my personal training business. I was literally couch surfing for three months, like didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I had a few hundred dollars in the bank. I was working at a gym and literally overnight, pretty much, I definitely planned it out, but I, and I was getting in the vibe of it and I was visualizing it and I was getting it into my body, which I realized later on, but Literally, I ended up um, going from that to making like five figure months, uh, bringing my clients to a different studio and becoming self-employed, leaving the gym and going from making a few hundred bucks or having a few hundred bucks in my bank to 10, 15 grand a month in my bank. Uh, renting out a posh studio to train my clients, like getting a new apartment in Manhattan. And it was like from from struggle bus to that, but I still had all these fears and doubts and all this stuff come up, but it happened really, really quickly. And I, there was like part of me that felt on top of the world, like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can't believe I actually did this. And then there was part of me that's like, oh shit, like now I'm really on my own. I need to make sure that I keep this up because I'm working for myself now. And this is always a dream of mine and da, 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 da. So I, I um, later on, 
because I've had a lot of ups and downs. It wasn't just smooth sailing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I started to pay attention. Okay, what was I doing in the times when things happened really easy for me? Because just as things can happen really easy for you, they can also, you know, kind of go the opposite way because you can manifest things that you want and you can manifest things that you don't want. And I experienced that in a lot of different ways. And after about a year and a half of being self-employed with my personal training business, um, it felt like things crumbled beneath me and I felt like a huge failure and I started bartending again and some clients moved and I felt like I was struggling again and all this stuff. And I was like, how the hell can I go from that to freaking back to square one? And then I built myself back up again a year later, whatever. But my point being is that I learned a lot from that experience. I learned, I knew that what I was, what I was doing to make it happen, but I also knew what I was doing when shit hit the fan. And at the same time, even despite that, I believe that I had to go through all of that so that I could learn the lesson so that I could teach it. So like, yeah. there's a paradox in all of it anyway, mm -hmm. but like, I, I recognized that I was giving my power away to fear and doubt. Um, and it completely like derailed me. And I started going to EMDR therapy and hypnosis. And then I started getting into plant medicine. And then I really went on my spiritual journey. Cause I was like, man, if I want to live my purpose and create my dream life and have this life of freedom and abundance and make an impact, I have got to get to the root of whatever is holding me back. And it's deep in there, you know, from my own trauma or whatever. And so I got really obsessed with mastering my mindset, healing and all this stuff. And in that, in getting obsessed with that to help myself live my purpose and impact, da, 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 I was led on a different path. I was like, whoa, I want to help people further than just fitness. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I want to help people live their best, most abundant, epic, fulfilling lives and doing what they love and living their purpose. So then, then I was led to, okay, I don't know what the hell this means yet, but, and then that's kind of what led me into creating my now business eventually. Yeah. I love that. It was a long answer to the question about it. manifesting, but what some tangible things that I did was like, like when it comes to manifesting was like, I'm all about embodiment and like not just visualizing, but visualizing it, speaking it out loud and like walking as if like I would be on the subway every day before I went self-employed and I would just listen to music that made me feel really good. I still do this to this day. I talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I would listen to music that feels really good and I would just pretend like it already was. I would mm -hmm. walk down the street like I was already like on my own, like making good money, like doing my thing. Mm -hmm. And I would just see it and feel it in my body every day and it happened really quickly. Yeah, that's awesome. I I love the speaking it out loud and just like, yeah, getting into the energy of it now and speaking it out loud until it goes from like, until it's a knowingness, until it's mm -hmm. just like, a, there is no separation. It's just like, there's like a, a fusion that happens where you are it already. It's like, the rest is inevitable. It's going to pop around the corner at any second and you're cool with it. And it's like, that's all that you're just in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that energy. And you said something else. Um, this is interesting because I truly do believe that it's our own ascension journey. If you want to be successful at your business, no matter what it is, but especially spiritual business. And I too feel like, okay, this is going to make a, every time shit hit the fan for me, it was just like, all right, this is making it a great success story one day. This is like, you just know that as a teacher healer kind of person that you're here to, because a lot of teachers and healers and light workers and stuff are listening to this episode. It's like, you intuitively know that like your you know that you your your transformational story is gold and as you can come through that story it's going to be it's going to be so valuable to help pull someone else up that's a few steps behind you or where you were back in the day and it's just like mm -hmm. when you have that knowing and you know that you really tap into being of service at that level right like you signed up to be an example to a degree, right? And live mm -hmm. by the truth of your own example. And yeah, your shit hits the fan sometimes. It's just part of the process, but you're working through it and you're getting through it. And if you can focus on your own ascension journey, your own ascension takes primary, you know, focus. And you touched on this. It's like when you go inward and you and you work on whatever that fear is, the, 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 the other shoe's going to drop, you know, that fear of loss, like, oh shit, everything's going to start over. Like, it doesn't matter what level you're at. If you're listening to this, you could be just starting out. You could already be making millions. I've talked to people on all different levels. Right. And it's like, they, there's still some of the same fears and it's just, 
it's just getting to the core of that and clearing that out. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's very interesting. It really is. It's a fun journey. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's like the best experience ever. Just when you mix spirituality and entrepreneurship together, I mean, can you even think of a better ascension path or journey, more exciting path to be on? Exactly. I can't. It's like, I mean, it, the entrepreneurial journey in and of itself is a spiritual journey, yeah. I believe. Like living your purpose and doing the work that you're meant to do is a spiritual journey because it requires you to grow and become and remember who you are at your core. Otherwise, like, sure, you can have success. Like, sure, you can make a lot of money, but you probably won't be nearly as fulfilled, mm -hmm. you know, and like as you would when you really go on the spiritual journey of like clearing out the crap and like shifting the old paradigms and like really, um, you know, opening your heart and, and being your fully expressed self. Yeah, you know, that's the spiritual journey is remembering who you are and yep. being your fully expressed soul self in the physical. Yeah, it's pure alignment. It's pure alignment because you can go out and you can make money. There's probably people listening to this. It's like you go down that road. Okay, now you're successful. You're making money. You know, I've been on that road too, right? Where it's like, but it's been a hustle. It's been a grind. I've sacrificed mm -hmm. other areas of my life in order to make it happen. You know, it was never alignment, mm -hmm. like pure alignment. And that was something you just won't experience if you're not working on your own spiritual ascension process. It just is. It just is. Yeah. And I feel like there's so many people, obviously, we're in this midst of this great awakening right now in this conscious movement. And like, this is, it's just such a powerful, there's so many women listening to this that I know will be listening to this episode in the future too, that are stepping into that journey, taking their first step, or they may already be in it like a year into it, a couple of years into it and going through some of these dark nights of the souls, shit hitting the fan, coming to Jesus moments. Like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and this clarity will help, help shine a light a little bit on that, um, that you're bringing to the table here. So I love this wisdom. Um, what would you say? So when you said you went back and you started to think about the things that shifted that the things that you did before okay yeah so you you really got into the moment of it i, t I love mu using music too i'm very uh, i'm very motivated by audio same yeah and mm. really getting into that zone and then what other tangible manifesting techniques can you share you know well i'm really big on hypnosis like i have used hypnosis i've got certified master practitioner of nlp hypnosis eft tools like that are have been a huge game changer for me so like like i shared back in the day when i had my first my not my first business but my other business i went to someone for hypnosis and then i was led to plant medicine which is another tool but that's another topic for another day um, but things like hypnosis have really helped me. I actually um, like really reprogram my subconscious mind and my beliefs. And so an EFT tapping really helps balance your energy system and clears out like old beliefs or emotions or just helps you kind of see things a different way. And those are really easy things that people can do on their own. I actually have like a whole 21 day program with those things that like allows you to do a hypnosis and EFT every single day for 21 days, like a different one to help you manifest more money, step into your confidence and create success. Um, I can share that if you want yeah, <laughs> um, for sure. anyone yeah. who wants to know, but those are some tools that have really, really helped me. Uh, mm -hmm. That along with, um, I do a lot of mirror work, a lot, a lot, a lot. This is something that I teach people in my programs as well. Um, uh, it's beyond affirmations. It's like literally like getting really intimate with yourself in front of the mirror and like not in a sexual way, but like just really like looking into your eyes, like, like, um, you're like changing your posture or your stance or dancing or, and saying whatever comes out, um, and just continuing to go and go and go and go and go. And it might feel really weird at first. Um, and it might feel like, I don't know, just silly, but the more you do it, like it just, you for me, I literally start to become it or it becomes me, the things that I say. I'll just open my freaking mouth and start saying things that make me feel really good. And I will keep going and going and going and going until I feel like stopping. You know, sometimes it's, you know, 
a few minutes. Sometimes it's like a hot, like a while and then like a, several songs and like, I just keep saying stuff. So mirror work, hypnosis, EFT. I have, I journal a lot of things too. Um, but the main thing personally is the, the, the embodiment of it, of being, being it. And it sounds really simple and it can be really simple, but what hap- what helps with actually being it and changing your identity is loosening the grip from the limiting beliefs, like loosening the grip of the old emotions that you're still carrying from young age or whatever. So that's, that's the deeper level of the work that helps you actually embody it more. Does that makes sense. Like yeah. you can embody it right now and it'll be easier for you to really ground into that new normal, that new way of being the, it's really remembering who you actually are or deciding who you want to be. It's easier for you to do that when you loosen the grip of the other things, but it's still possible to do it and just decide. Um, Depending on, it depends. Like everyone's also kind of a little different on, on their own journey. And some people aren't ready to let certain things go and they might need to look a little deeper into why that is. Um, But yeah, the embodiment piece is huge. Yeah, embodiment is so huge. And I resonate too with the EFT and the hypnosis. I think there was like a two year phase where, you know, I was my own self study project and I would just, I'd uncovered, okay, here's my desire. Here's what's happening. There's a belief under the radar that's not, that's stopping me from going from this point to, I'd uncover it and I'd go to my hypnosis guy and um, this is what we're working on today. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'd come home with my seat. I, I'd have a hypnosis session. I'd be able to reinforce it for like, until I didn't need it. You know, I, I still probably have copies of them lying around. And then I'd be on to the next one. Like, what am I working on now? You know, like as the beliefs, as the blo- as the resistance, as I would hit resistance, I would just take that straight to my hypnosis guy, of course, doing EFT and stuff like that too. I'm like, this is what we're working on now. Mm. <laughs> it's so, it's so true. Um, that it does, it does loosen that grip and it can help make like quick shifts. And there's a really interesting story I wanted to share when I wrote on the subject of hypnosis. Maybe you could elaborate on this for me because it was the most weird thing. So I had this hypnosis session and at the end of it, I felt so free. It felt like every single thing that has ever held me back, any belief, any doubt, any fear, anything was gone. And I felt so free. And I was just like, I went home. I was like a fish out of water because it was so opposite of what I was used to as my normal, as my Mm. comfort zone. It was so uncomfortable to feel that free that I went back the next day and I had him like reverse it. And I was like, there's no shortcuts in this, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, and then I went through the work, like the actual inner work to get to that place. But it was like, I had this hypnosis session that almost made me feel like too free compared to like what my reality actually was. So, was, you know what I mean? It's like, it was the weirdest experience because I personally felt like I had transcended like my current circumstances. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, I was so uncomfortable And that's so interesting to think too now looking back at it because it's like we cling to what's familiar. We cling Mm -hmm. to what's comfortable, even if the familiar and the comfortable is shit we don't like. Yeah. Hypnosis experience gave me that like profound wisdom. I was like, damn, there really, really is no shortcut to the soul work, to the inner work. Like, yes, I still went to hypnosis. It was still a tool, but like I peeled it away in layers instead of just like out the gate. And I don't know if I should have done that or not, but that's what I did at the time. It was just like the most Mm -hmm. odd experience. Maybe, I don't know. Well, it's because you were, because you were, you're like clinging to an identity Mm -hmm. and it sounds like you, like you felt so free because you were no longer like holding on to old identities or old ways of being. And so it's kind of like, I think that this is actually a, a big reason why a lot of people are afraid of success subconsciously because it's like well who would I be if I really did have it all Mm -hmm. oh my god you'd be more of you Mm -hmm. um but it sounds like it it was like this like an identity crisis almost of like (laughs) oh shit I don't even know who I am now because I can't hold on to that anymore because that's not there and so well well what does that mean about me that's exactly what was happening that's how powerful the hypnosis sessions can be you guys so definitely like um, I'm going to share a link to you know 
to, to Stephanie's um, thing, but yeah, hypnosis is so powerful, but that's how powerful it was. I had like a total identity crisis. Like if I can't cling to my victim story and to all the bullshit stuff mm -hmm. that I was telling myself, then who am I? And why do I feel so uncomfortable right now? But I felt so uncomfortable in my own skin that mm. I had to go back and get it reversed a little bit. He didn't reverse everything, but we, I mean, he can just like reverse it. Right. And it just went like, that's all he did was reverse it. And it was like, and then we were, we, and then I like still worked on something else to make it like more of a gradual transition. It was like, I think I had that experience too, just because of like the realization that I had, like, because of it, it was like how much we cling to our victim story and to our mm -hmm. bullshit stories and our limited beliefs and how mm -hmm. much like our ego will unconsciously try to, this is why you get, you sabotage your goals and you sabotage mm -hmm. your dreams and you sabotage or you avoid the work or you or you're you don't meditate you know or yeah. you stop doing the work because your comfort zone even as shitty as it may be sometimes is familiar to you yeah and i think that's like a really good uh point and a good question for people listening to ask themselves is like who are you behind all of the stories behind all of the doubts behind all of the fears behind what has happened to you who are you behind all of that like that's a really good thing to journal on because the truth of the matter is that you are not your stories you're not your thoughts you're not your circumstances you're not your feelings you're not even your body <laughs> like you are literally a stream of consciousness like streaming through this physical vessel experiencing and expressing like you can experience and express and so it's like you get to choose who you want to be so who are you really behind all of the the shit like who are you you literally get to decide who that is and what's like a big part of the work that i do with people as well is the quantum manifestation and helping them like literally shift into a new reality which is also a new identity by connecting to a different version of themselves who's already living in the reality where they have it all and bringing pieces of that into the now mm -hmm. so like the version of you who's already making millions of dollars or speaking on stages or whatever it is um meditations or visualizations to connect with that that you and bringing pieces of that into the embodiment of your now you because everything's happening right now anyway like everything the past was a now moment the future is going to be a new now moment like we're creating in the now always mm -hmm. and so when you can embody your highest most abundant amazing self in the now it doesn't mean you're not going to have days where you feel like a hot mess but when you can embody that more and more and more and hold more of that energy, mm -hmm. um, you'll experience more magic and miracles, yeah. more abundance. Yeah. So, so who beautiful. are you? <laughs> or who yeah. do you want to be? <laughs> yeah, looking back on, yeah, it's so true. If I, had I been able to focus my consciousness in the present moment versus allowing my mind to go astray, I would not have felt, I don't feel I would have had that identity crisis. You know what I mean? But my mind was so unconditioned to be in the present moment. Like, like now I can have those states now because I've done the work. And so now I can feel free like that and everything's working out and synchronicities are just flowing and everything. But that's because I, I'm able to focus in the present moment now because it's a choice that it's just, it's a conscious decision that I'm, I'm constantly bringing myself back to the present moment, recognizing the voice mm -hmm. or the doubt or the fear or the mind that is like more stuck in duality going back and forth where oneness inner your inner essence your core essence your soul is the one that's experiencing and observing right it's not stuck in the duality so mm -hmm. now that i'm able to practice that it's like being able to do it like just through the through the work but talking out loud now i think yeah that was the thing that tripped me up is not focusing and not being able to focus in the, an untrained mind an untrained mind not being able to bring yourself, you know, through the power of like mindfulness and meditation and stuff like that into the present moment will, will run amok with you. Like literally mm -hmm. just derail you over and over again, if you can't control your mind and, and mm -hmm. bring yourself back into that present moment. Yeah. It's definitely a practice too. I mean, it's literally a practice, like in a way of being and a choice and a constant practice. And you have the contrast that tests you and reminds you and says are you really sure you know are you really ready for this <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Okay. Well, I loved our little chat today. I thought it was so interesting. How do you, um, how do you work with people right now? If they're listening to this and they're interested in where can they follow you or connect with you? Yeah. So I'm mostly on Instagram these days at the spiritual boss, babe, um, at the spiritual boss, babe. (laughs) Um, I have all like my different programs and offers and stuff on my site, spiritualbossbabe.com. And then, of course, you know, I got my podcast, my Facebook group. You could just search Spiritual Boss Babe and you'll find it or Spiritual Boss Babes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I will include those links, you guys, in the show notes if you're interested in following up and connecting with Stephanie. And did you have any final thoughts like for anyone that's listening in that's getting just getting ready to start their spiritual business? Um, I would say like, don't worry about having it all panned out and like knowing exactly how it's got to look or be or whatever, just take the first step and the next will follow and the next will follow and keep showing up, keep growing, keep expanding, keep investing in yourself and taking the next best step because it will all unfold. It really will. Yeah. You can't lose if you're following your guidance system if you're following your intuition and you're listening to that part of you 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 can't like you said earlier it you can't fail like all you do is keep going and evolving and expanding and it's really you just can't fail if you just continue to take those steps Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so true yeah thank you stephanie i had so much fun having you on the show thank you so much this was awesome yeah it's nice Mm -hmm. having you you guys um Tune into the next episode um, and I will see you soon. Namaste.